LWD Adnan here and welcome to today's Samerang Bond scenario video. A whole different video than what you're probably used to watching the scenario videos where it's literally just gameplay. But I thought, hey, why not spice things up a little bit, try something new, try something different and just see how it goes. So I'll be accompanying you on today's scenario as we continue playing through Samerang Barn. And uh, yeah, let's just see how it goes. So we've got Blizzard bus today. As you can see, I'm still way behind on my usual schedule. Uh, but we do have a 45-minute scenario today that we'll be doing. It's called Blizzard Bus. Drive this rescue service through the mountains to pick up hikers stuck in the cold. Let's get to it. We're using the the talent or the uh, OBB4024. Thank you to all of you who've come on the live stream and have uh, helped me with all my various pronunciations on both Train Sim World and Simrel. Uh, so let's see what this scenario is about. Blizzard Bus. It's kind of in the name, I guess. So, welcome to Glognitz. Ahead of a blizzard, we have been asked to run this rescue service to Semmering, picking up hikers who didn't make it out of the cold. That doesn't sound good. Picking up hikers who didn't make it out of the cold. Are we just to be picking up bodies at this point? Because that's exactly what that sounds like. Um, right, first things first. Let's set up the uh, the train here. So we'll set... Oh, that was odd. Uh, so we've got that to headlights. And we are turning on PZB as well as C for as well, as we usually do. Set the master switch to active. Indeed, we'll do that. Put the brake handle in. Set it to drive set the the reverse to forward and we'll be waiting a moment we might as well get the wipers on while we're at it have them on slow setting uh let's have a little look at the unit today quite a decent i mean quite a low-key quiet emu really there's not really much more to it um very similar of course to the uh, german talent variant same family of course um I do like the paint job. I've never actually noticed. I don't know whether it's just the lighting. Something's making a lot of noise. There you go. Taurus. Um, I don't know whether it's the lighting. But I've never noticed that the paint scheme is red and grey. I always thought it was red and white. It's actually my first time ever noticing that. Very, very interesting. Um, anyway, back in the cab. Very, very zoomed in, of course. Thanks to uh, the God Mode mod allowing us to... Zoom in and out a lot more than what the uh, what the default game would allow us to do. So, a scenario. Now, as we wait at this, uh, as we wait at this signal, I will touch on the opinion that I tend to give when it comes to scenarios on Train Sim World. Uh, not just four, but realistically, from the uh, from the get go, I think with Train Sim World, it's fair to say. I did start playing in, oh, what year was it? I can't tell you the year, but I know it was when TSW2 was the uh, current release. So a few years ago now, but I do have roots from before. And um, one thing that I've seen is consistent, although it's not something that's there every single, with every single DLC, it's consistent enough for me to say that it's consistent basically and uh, that is that scenarios are not really what i think they should be now again if you've been around during my streams when you know i'll have these conversations especially during the trains and world streams which uh on a regular schedule we stream twice a week on uh wednesdays and thursdays little plug um yeah, so if you've been around there, you'd know that my opinion on scenarios is that uh, it's, it's quite a negative one. It's quite a negative one as our uh, signal clears here. So we've got 3.4 miles until hiker approach one. So let's see what's in store for us. That will clear piece would be as well. We'll release ourselves from that. Um, so yeah, my main issue with scenarios in TSW has always been that they just don't feel like more they don't feel more different enough to a regular run you know f to be to be put in a separate bracket or to be given a separate title 
So, for example, one scenario that we consistently get with every single route is the weather scenario, where the weather will be so bad, disruption, this and that. If we're lucky, we'll get a tree on the line or we'll get some disruption that means that we end the run shortly. Now, even that, even when we do have stuff like, oh, a tree's falling onto the line, it's not always great. I'll take the recent five circle line route as an example, where a message comes up as you approach where a supposed tree has fallen. A message comes up and it lets you know that, I wouldn't even say it lets you know, it screams at you that you need to stop. It basically shouts at you, stop now, hit the emergency brakes and you know, you're well, all of a sudden you're obviously coming to a stop as long as you're in accordance with that instruction and the message comes up and it tells you that there's, there's a tree that's fallen in the line and it the game makes it out as if you were so close to hitting this tree now there isn't a tree in sight and it's not like you're stopped just before a bend and perhaps the fallen tree is directly after that bend no there's a good at least half a mile or three quarters of a mile of straight track ahead of you and there's not a single tree i don't remember exactly the name of the scenario but it is up on the channel it is up on the channel um and it's just that kind of sort of thing that really really irks me i think all the way back on one of the earlier german routes i can't think of the name of right now from the top of my head but one of the earlier German routes has a similar thing, but it sort of plays out a little better where you're forced to end the scenario early because of there's a tree that's fallen somewhere. Um, but it clearly states that the tree that's fallen is somewhere ahead of the line and there's tons of disruption and there's trains being held back and it's just a nightmare. So where we are right now, we're at a station, we're being called to hand over the service here and, you know, passengers are going to have to find a different way around. I like that because you're not pretending that there's like this this disruption uh, sorry destruction right ahead of you that's fine and then on the other hand you know on the other side of scale you've got something like the goblin land for example and I know I'm using quite recent routes but uh, these are the ones that I can name off the top of my head on the goblin land there's a scenario where there's a flood uh, and it's not it's nothing major it's nothing crazy but it's a flood right and there's all these restrictions on the, on the tracks and stuff that are used in like emergencies that you wouldn't normally see used by London Underground, for example, right? Certain signs, you've got obviously workers on the tracks as well, but you also actually have water on the tracks. The tracks are actually legitimately flooded. Now, that made the scenario for me. I didn't need like six feet high water and, and, and this really dramatic scene and this really dramatic scenario and I'm not playing that sort of game I'm not playing that sort of game you know we're on the uh, we're on the tracks we're on the railways we're on trains and yes sometimes weather can be terrible and indeed we have to deal with something like flooding but when it's like that and trains are still running it means the flooding isn't that you know the water is not that deep to, to be worried about and so for scenarios like that I'm all for but to, 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 to say hit the emergency brake there's a tree in front of you and I can't see the train I'm sorry I can't see the tree uh, it's not great it's not great it's not great so yeah you know I, I try to be someone look who pulls out what things are as they are right um, I try to be unbiased for the most part and so that's why I'm using good examples as well like the Goblin line for example then you've got the blockbuster scenario on the Antelope Valley line which is you basically taking part in a, uh, a movie scene basically you know you're doing a couple takes and you've got helicopter chase going on that you can see by the way you can see the helicopters chasing a car you can see this jet flying over us dropping all these bombs and all these explosions and yes that is a little bit over dramatic but realistically one you're filming a movie so within that realm it makes sense and is acceptable 
and I'm also not going to ignore the fact that that Taurus had tail lights on at the front. Um, this route, I think, is old enough now that those things should have been sorted out, and I'm going to touch on those sort of things a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, within the realms of, of a movie scene, you're allowed to be a bit dramatic. That's the whole point of a movie, right? It's, it's dramatic. But I feel like for some routes that would have had that sort of scene, I mean, didn't we have one? We had a similar one, I think, for... Oh, I could be wrong. No, let me not, let me not, let me not bring it up. I, I'm pretty sure there was something similar on, was it Cajon Pass or something of the sort? Um, that wasn't done as well, but I'm not going to, because I'm not, I'm not too sure. I don't want to just talk about my rear. Let me actually state facts and, and let's try and stick to the facts, right? Um, as well as voice opinions when they are actually opinions. So, yeah, that's sort of my... <laughs> and I've gone on that topic for a while now, but I just wanted to share my opinion when it comes to scenarios. So, and I guess that basically opens the floor for what my expectations are with these scenarios. So, so far, there was Firewatch, which I've done and uploaded. That was just without any speaking. That was literally just gameplay. And my opinion of that scenario is it's better than a lot of the scenarios we've had, but still rather underwhelming. I mean, I couldn't even see the fire using the 8 cab to fly around because they'd set up walls so that you can't access that particular area. Although they released a screenshot themselves, talking about Dovetail here, they released a screenshot themselves of, um, of like a, 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 a screenshot of the camera placed above the fire which looks pretty cool so i don't know why they sort of didn't allow us to do it and it kind of no it definitely didn't ruin the scenario for me but it would have been nice to see the action you know actually as i was even praising the goblin line or the london overground suffragette line for those who are not familiar with the uh, goblin name uh the goblin nickname for that line um there was that one route where I believe it was the bonfire night route where there was supposedly a wagon on fire uh, that took place on an like as you went on an overpass it was basically below you right as you're approaching Barking Riverside and um, I didn't see it at first and there was the you know the text at the bottom saying oh we've passed it now we should probably notify a dispatcher or something of the sort and I'm just thinking to myself oh here we go sorry Hello driver, I have a few hackers ahead of you. Stop where you can and let them board. All right, so do we just stop? Or is it gonna tell us what to stop? No, it's gonna tell us what to stop, okay. So yeah, and it said, right, there's a fire. Maybe some you, some you someone's messed around somewhere, caused some trouble, we should notify dispatcher. And I had to pause, and usually when I'm rich recording these scenarios, I like to do it in one swoop, less editing for me. But I had to pause and look for this fire. And I finally found it, and it was the most underwhelming thing I've ever seen in my life. It was basically a, a regular container wagon with like the flare, um, almost like it, it almost looked like it just had flares inside that were spreading light outwards. It didn't even look orange, it was very, very red. And there was a bit of smoke, I guess, but it just looked so underwhelming. And look, I'm all for moving forward, and I understand when you're tra traversing a new you know new environments baby steps and all of those things but this was below baby steps and it was just so so underwhelming and it's the same route it's the same route that had you know a great scenario in it so at the end of the day i think it just comes back to the whole dovetail thing and train sim world thing where we just can't see good consistency we see consistency but it's consistency that's just all over the place realistically and we're going a little bit fast here we should be alright to slow down in time though. Keeping an eye on the distance marker on the top left on the HUD. That's pretty much going to be perfect. I've been pretty much on top of Seifer as well, uh, which I'm happy about. Almost a perfect stop. Sound the horn, let the hikers know where you are, alright? Open the door, sound the hikers to board. Where are they? Oh, right, they're here. Look at this. Oh, alright then. What do we have here then? This is a little, a little, realistically speaking, this is a little uh, photo opportunity, realistically, isn't it? A little, uh, little uh, thumbnail, thumbnail thing. How can I do that with the train in the background, though? Let's see. I need to... 
I need to capture the scene right there. We go. How about? Oh, oh, yes. Now we're talking. How about that? But I would like to get the train a bit more in a bit more in uh, in view. Oh, we just do this right. Just get everyone in view realistically. Yeah. Um, where am I gonna have the logos and whatnot? I might do. Might do this. Oh, there's another train coming. Oh, should we wait for it? I don't have this really cool scene where both trains are passing. Bang. Look at that. I saw it's almost like I it's almost like I'm a professional at this. So let's get a nice angle once again where we capture both. You know what? That this will do. This there you go. This will do indeed. Um FOV, maybe increase that a little bit. Yeah, that's a banging uh, thumbnail. Lovely jubbly. Save and upload that. And then we'll get back to the scenario. Ah, of course. I really hoped we'd see them actually walk in, but uh, alas, that seems to be too tough for uh, Dovetail to uh, to model. The hackers are on the train. You may now close the doors and depart very, very well. I believe the doors are closed now. All good to go. So I'm moving. But one, one thing I like to do is accelerate usually with 50% uh, power up to 10, 5 to 10 miles an hour. And then just floor it after that basically. A tip I took recently from a, a train driver apparently. A real train driver on the Goblin Line preview stream I think it was. seem to be doing oh no these are the it had to be it could it could it couldn't be the smooth run could it that was too much to ask for that was way too much to ask for right let's actually uh, abide by uh, the piece of the speed limit now 27 miles an hour hopefully uh it will allow us to move shortly We've been doing pretty well so far with regards to uh, P's and B and C4. C4 especially. C4 just seems to be the bane of my life when I play Train Sim World. And it's like, I can keep an eye on it. And as soon as I take my eye off it, it beeps. So where is that time to, to turn on, remain on, and wait for me to acknowledge? I don't know where, it, where, where the time comes from. But uh, regardless, onwards and forwards we go on to Hiker Approach 2. So I assume we're collecting another set of hikers. And I could just open the like uh, the little menu that shows us what's coming basically but i want to kind of keep it like as a surprise i'm not expecting too many more hikers seeing as we are on a only on a 45 minute scenario where i've been released from pzb so i was gonna say just before we were hit with that um, emergency break um where's this train seems to be doing pretty well in terms of wheel slip i have been given it a bit fair bit of power to be fair and it just seems to be handling it very well, very, very, very well. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that as we're traversing along, if you've been keeping an eye on the distance marker, or shall I say the objective, uh, objective distance marker, you would have noticed that sometimes it goes up and down. Sometimes we seem to be getting further away from our objective, and sometimes we're obviously getting closer to our objective as we're just continuing on straight. And that's because the distance for the objective marker is based on a, like an as the crow flies thing so it's basically a straight line from where you are now why after all of these years dovetail still haven't been able to fix this i have no clue because it, it's, it doesn't work like that with signals um it doesn't work like that with the uh, speed limit distances if I had those turned on so I can't understand why they can't get it to work with the objective marker which is arguably the more important of the three here we go hello driver I have a few hackers ahead of you stop where you can and let them board so here we go once again now I would like to know how this sort of thing happens IRL would trains actually be sent 
I guess under very special circumstances, perhaps, fine. But I doubt it would be a thing that just happens that willy-nilly. Also, we'll get the instrument lights turned on. I do always like the glow that they uh, provide. To be fair, the TOD4 weather is doing its thing. I mean, this blizzard is a blizzard, right? It, it does uh, give you the sense of, well, freezing, I guess. <laughs> I'm glad that everyone seems to be alive, though, because the way the, uh, the text was worded out earlier on, I was a little worried. But, uh, yeah, everything seems okay to a degree anyway. To a very low degree. <laughs> Get it? Degree Celsius. Anyway, let's sound the horn once again. Open the doors. No need to have anybody to look outside now. Fade to black. Fade out from black. And just like that, they're on board. I mean, I guess complaining that there's no... Like, we're unable to actually see the movement in action. Maybe it's a bit, nit a bit nit nitpicky. Let me be content with the fact that, hey, at least we have these sort of scenarios that are somewhat fun. Um, why aren't we? Uh, why aren't we able to move then? Right. So we did have a little red light here. What does this say? NBU. So whatever NBU is or NBU, if I uh, want to try and pronounce it the uh, correct way, that means that our break, uh, that our throttle isn't working. So that's something I've literally just learned. To be honest, I don't have an incredible amount of experience on this train. I don't make like an incredible amount of hours driving this train. I've had some weird happenings on stream with it, which I think I now understand why. And it was just down to like neutral sections and not understanding how to pro properly reset the train after going through a neutral section. Um, and I think yeah, a lot of it was just user error. So I think it's a decent train. I do like the. Uh, I like. The, I think the audio is okay. Obviously, I'm not familiar with these trains in real life. Um, I've heard that the audio isn't so good, but uh, from someone who's just knows this train of trains in world, it's not too bad in my opinion. But I can't argue with you if you say that, you know, it doesn't sound like it's real life counterpart. <laughs> and you know what it sounds like um, IRL, so, you know, those opinions. Um, or facts, I guess, are valid, realistically. Right, we're speeding just a little bit. We'll try and slow it down a little bit. We are in a almost, well, 2.5% gradient now. That went up really, really quickly, so we'll basically have the train sort of break for us because of gravity. Thank you very much, gravity. Uh, we're less than a mile now from, well, from a Govaya, actually. So, realistically, I can afford to put the power on a little bit. So onto our third set of hikers. So how is it that all of these hikers? Did, is it? I'm assuming this blizzard must have just come unannounced. But there's no way that all of these hikers, who I I can only assume it's not their first rodeo, um, have been caught out like this. And what are the chances that they all seem to be stranded right by the uh, main line? Once again, hello driver, I have a few hackers ahead of you. Stop where you can and let them board. Very well dispatch. We've got, we've got almost a mile to go. We're all right for now to keep it moving. Well, it also would be helpful if the hikers had flares. I guess it's all right for in-game, but realistically, in, re in reality, you would want uh, Something to help you be more seen in this uh, sea of white. I'm looking forward to what the rest of the uh, the uh, the scenarios hold. I do have interesting opinions on the route itself. I do. I would like to release that video separately, uh, and I will do so soon at some point once I find the time to do it. Um, so I won't. I don't want to speak too much of the route itself. But uh, I do hope the scenarios... I'm hopeful. I am hopeful for the scenarios. 
So I'm looking forward to what they hold for us in the uh, coming days. And again, apologies for releasing these so slow. I think I've been mostly busy with the streams. We are celebrating Simrel's cargo pack DLC release, and so I'm doing like a week, week long marathon of um, of Simrel, which only remains two days. Today, as I'm recording this, Friday, and uh, tomorrow is Saturday. Obviously, that might be completely different depending on when I release uh, release this video, which should be on the Saturday, to be honest. Right, where are these? I can't see any, I can't see anyone here. Oh, they're right here. How did I miss them? Also, wouldn't it be better for me just to open, like, the driver's doors? Does the driver have a door in here? Okay, no, do it. So, it would just be better to sort of open one set of doors then. Um, rather than the whole train. But I guess, uh, yeah. Tough to tell I yet to be able to implement that. Which is a shame. I really think Dovetail should be a little bit ahead now in terms of what um, features there are in terms of the trains. For example, with look, we, we look at Goblin Line or the Overground Line, the London Overground Line, and I just don't think it's great that however many years in, we're still unable to have doors that can close without being interlocked. And you look at Simrel, who has just entered the game, you know what? couple years ago a few years ago now and from the jump they had trains on their game that uh, could you know where the doors could be unlocked but still closed um, and so I can't imagine it being super difficult super super difficult you know and uh, yeah it sucks man it sucks because a lot of the trains in the game you know uh, have that feature you know in real life so it sucks that we can't um, we can't do, can't utilize it as it is. I think we're coming to an to 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 an end now. Fortunately, I did I do believe the at the very beginning the introduction said that we would be taking them to uh, summer ring, and it seems like we've collected all the hikers now. So thankfully, they are now nice and safe, and hopefully we'll receive whatever treatment they they might need at uh, Sembring and also whether it be today's video whether it be future ones on Sembring Barn or realistically any route outside the UK please do forgive my pronunciation I do try I promise but uh, boy oh boy some uh, some names some places it's uh, it's kind of crazy <laughs> But um, yeah, I will try. But just think of me for that regardless. I don't intend to offend, of course. The lights become very, very bright in here, don't they? Or everything on the gauge becomes incredibly bright. I think that's down to Jetwash's um, graphics mods. I was just thinking to myself as we uh, I want to say I'm struggling to maintain like the exact speed but we are finding that we are speeding uh, every now and again I would like a more advanced <laughs> cruise control system on this train for now I think it literally just holds the speed that you're at and doesn't care for slopes as far as I'm aware so if you're going downhill it won't slow you down and you can't adjust it it's a very 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 basic uh, implementation
Oh, some interesting uh, visual glitches there. Oh my god, that was bright. For the most part, I think eye adaptation is a lot better implemented here than it is with some other routes. But I guess that seems to be somewhat weather dependent. Because exiting that tunnel was super bright. Thank god I don't have like a, uh, a HDR display. With a super high peak brightness because uh yeah i would have probably needed sunglasses after that one this is the thing with um you know driving these mountainous uh you know routes on this game is that 1.7 miles it could in reality be three or four miles or it could just be 1.6 <laughs> and you just don't know so I remember when I started playing TSW2 and my first route that I got into was the sand patch grade which uh, if you've played that you know that it's just constantly twisting 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 around the uh, the mountains in the area and um, the distance to the distance to the objective marker was just Man, you couldn't even try to guess how far you really were away from your objective. Um, it was literally just a waiting game and then once you'd ran the route enough times, you could start to sort of guess and have a fair idea of how far away you are. I think this is one of my, if not my favourite spot in this whole route where you've got these openings in the, in the tunnel. And it reminds me of a lot of, uh, a lot of the roads actually um, in Austria. A very strange effect I'm seeing and I don't know whether that's the sort of the blizzard causing that or whether um, it's one of the mods that I've got installed. That's the thing, you know, I can only uh, dog on bugs and whatnot so much because I've, my game is literally absolutely chock full of, um, of mods. But saying that at the same time, if my game wasn't chock full of mods, I would find Train Sim World for very 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 hard to approach I remember it was a similar thing with TSW 3 and when Train Sim World 4 came out and I was forced to play vanilla for a while you know when I was uh, playing on early access and you know the first couple of weeks it just felt like such a downgrade from TSW 3 but it wasn't because this bit is worse than TSW 3 in any way it was literally just because all the mods were gone and I really do feel for my people over on consoles that don't have access to mods because for me personally it makes the game playable and for the most part changes the experience enough to um, to have me to make me play hours that I wouldn't otherwise have spent on, on Trades and World. But here we are about three or four minutes now since I last spoke on the distance things and we've only gained oh, oh look at that we are still on 1.5 miles <laughs> there's my point uh, made so I've got no clue when we're actually going to reach the uh, semi ring because we could go another five minutes and it could still be 1.5 miles so it's just a matter of uh, well picking the pace up a little bit and actually driving at the, uh, the speed limits and being patient because what other choice do we have uh, it's got suddenly very dark all right there we go we've got some uh, some light on the sides of the tunnels we're on a 1.2% gradient so we'll keep the power up a little bit just to keep us uh, at our current speed and not slow down it really sucks that we don't have this screen over here active really 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 sucks the ETCS update recently on uh, Simrail really brought the Pendolino there alive I think and increased the merge by quite a lot and I was saying that with tracing mode with all these screens mostly ebula screens that are dark I wouldn't even mind the static image you know whether it's an ebula screen, whether it's like a CCTV screen. I honestly wouldn't mind something as basic as a static image. And I honestly, I, 
to be fair i don't even know which one's worse in terms of reminding you that it's 2024 now and games have become very advanced i don't know what's worse a black screen or a static image but at least i think at least give us something at least give us something for for the sake of immersion you know it's a shame and especially on this train where it almost sticks out into your face it's uh, it's very 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 obvious you know and even something like this uh, like the radio here you know at least have something there man anything i believe it's a destination thing maybe it's active on a normal service but i ain't seeing it right now um and i really wish uh, i wish i was see what i'm seeing see for light i just saw it I just saw it and I went to press it and already it was making noise. I honestly feel like it's got a grudge against me. Whether it's this train, whether it's any other train that has a CIFA function, I really feel like it's got a grudge against me. Right, I believe now we are actually starting to approach Severing. And other than that one L I took with PZB when we took up the first set of hikers, I believe it was, it's been a pretty smooth journey. Pretty smooth journey, I can't really complain. Especially with this blizzard go uh, going on. Hmm. Eye, eye adaptation does seem it could just be me, but I really feel like it's a lot slower than what I've seen it do. And I really do think weather might play a part in that. I can only imagine it would. I guess if you really want to know if you're close to the station or not, you could just use the HUD on the top right and enable it, uh, enable in the menu the options for it to show stations and then you just know whether within that distance you actually do have a station coming up or not. I think that will be more accurate than the objective marker for sure. Right, with these Tauruses, do they just look like red? The headlights are red or are they actually red? Alright, oh, no, they're headlights. They are headlights. But because they're sort of yellowish and I guess the colours are a little bit off for whatever reason, it may just be the snow, it may just be that the headlight covers are wet, I don't know what it might be. But they've looked red this whole time. But they do seem to be uh, they do seem to be like a yellowy, yellowy sort of colour. Gosh, it's so bright when you come out of the tunnel. Funny that it's only when I approach the passengers that they uh, put up their, uh, their umbrellas. Make sure we acknowledge this. We're going slow enough that we're not going to need to uh, slow down any any further for, uh, for PZB. We will only limit us to... 80 kilometers or 85 uh, 85 kilometers if I'm not mistaken right now I believe we are approaching Semmering for real for real now because I think even at 0 0.8 miles it was still uh, not accurate I really hope they can change that soon I really really hope a little bit we do have a uh, 500 hertz magnet in action so we'll not exceed 15 miles per hour and we'll slowly coast all the way to our uh, stopping point and that will be it i think that was a, that was a pretty uh pretty 
scenario, I mean, pretty straightforward, pretty basic to be honest, although more complex than a lot of what we've had before and what we've seen before. Um, it's still pretty, yeah, still pretty good. And I hope you guys have enjoyed having me around for this one. Let me know if it's something that you'd want to see in the future. I would be willing to do some more. My, 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 my issue is, is that I'm not... I don't think I'm a talker. Sometimes I just somehow manage to pull it out of the bag. But I, I think I struggle to talk. And that's why on streams, like, I think I have a better time. Because I have a lot of people around. Um, you know, and it's easier for conversations to flow that way. Rather than me having to talk <laughs> by myself. Um... But I think we managed all right. Here we go. Thanks for your help today. The hikers are happy to be somewhere safe, warm, and dry. Let's see how you did. But yeah, I think I've done well today. Um, but I wonder if I've used up my, all my battery. <laughs> I think that remains to be seen. Well, I'm going to be recording the next one straight after this. So uh, actually, maybe not. Maybe I should give it some time. We'll see. Anyway, uh, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming a platinum trophy, of course. Platinum medal, shall I say. Um, got a bit of uh, negative points for speeding, which was to be expected. Correct cab car. Correct cab setup. We didn't get anything for that. Uh, so, well, L for me. Uh, you know, turning on PZ, BNC for, for no reason. Well, it's not for no reason. I do it for myself, to be honest. I do it for realism. Um, but yeah, we got a plan. So that's all good. Um, our next one will be Milkshake, apparently. Let me actually confirm that. I miss when the uh, loading used to be super, super quick once upon a time. It is indeed Milkshake, and I'm not going to ruin what it's about yet. So, make sure you tune in for that one if you uh, have liked this one. It's only half an hour, so it's even shorter than this one. Um, but yeah, I've pre I had a pretty good time doing that. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you have, please please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Um, it's important for me as well to let you guys know that I also stream five days a week. The schedule is Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. usually, although I found myself recently pushing the time a little bit further than we usually do. I am trying to experiment a little bit. But for now, that is the official schedule. So, yes, that will be all for now. Have a lovely rest of your day. Stay safe. Take care of each other. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.